All right, guys, welcome back. Um, this is going to be part two of winterizing my race car, my IMCA modified. Um, we are going to, in this video, um, basically go over uh, making sure my cylinders are empty. Um, also, backing off the valves. I'll show you how to back off the valves. Uh, and then also, there's another piece of this that I usually do at the end. Um, I believe I mentioned it in the first video and that is uh, draining the block. Um, I've already antifreezed it. That's usually the first thing you do before you start any of this. That way you have the opportunity to let your car run and mix that antifreeze into your car. Um, so we'll go over draining the block as well. Um, I hope this video is going to help you out. Um, just gonna, again, I'm just going to show you the way I do things. And uh, here we go. Thanks for joining me, guys. All right, guys. So um, in my previous video, um, I just want to kind of remind you, I had already taken out my spark plugs. Okay. And disconnected the wires and took out the spark plugs. Um, when I was spinning it around, um, doing stuff for the fuel, it just made it much easier to spin it with no compression resistance. And, um, that is kind of how I also make sure that there's nothing left inside the cylinders, um, getting those all gunky. So, um, doing that helps a lot. Um, but the other thing that I kind of want to point out is when I get done doing all that, I usually put my motor at top dead center. Um, I don't know if you can see way down there at the timing mark, I am at top dead center. Um, I can also confirm that because we're gonna take the valve covers off here in a second. Anyways, um, so I removed my four cap nuts. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take this off. So here we go, here's part of my valve train. Um, these are my rocker arms. Uh, I'm able to confirm that I'm at top dead center, which basically means um, that I'm at the uh, top of the compression stroke. Um, so for the cam, there's no pressure on the lifters, no no pressures on the lifters pushing up on the push rod, putting any pressure on these here rocker arms pushing down on the valve. So the valves are completely closed. Um, so part of what we're going to do to winterize this thing is actually take, um, back off all the valves. Um, as you can see, as these are closed, this one is being pushed down, which leaves the valve open. That's on the intake side. Uh, but like this one is pushing down and it is the easy way to cheat. It is lined up with the exhaust, right? So um, this one's actually on the exhaust side, meaning that the hole on the other side of this header tube is open into the cylinder. Um, not necessarily a god awful terrible thing. Uh, for years and years and years, I did not use to back off my valves um, after the winter, during the winterization process. This is something I just kind of picked up um, for longevity. Plus, um, it you know gets pressures off, pressure off your springs. And in the end, before this motor gets fired back up for next year, um, I'm actually going to change these springs, which is going to be part of another another video when I change out my valve springs. So, um, but right now I'm just going to go through and back all these off to where they're closed, nice and loose. I'm still gonna leave them attached and in here so they don't get lost or anything like that. Uh, but we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you how to do that on um, only a couple of these for expediency. I know my last video was extremely long and I'm gonna try to get better about getting straight to the point um, and showing you 
a couple examples rather than making you have to sit through all of it. So here we go. Um, let me set this camera down here. So the way I do this, I got my ratchet um, with an Allen because these are um, locking. So the inside here, you'll actually have to loosen those up. Get your Allen in there. You can use a regular Allen or whatever. Um, and then I use my 5 8 wrench. Grab a hold of that and go ahead and just break it loose. And I'm going to do the same over here. Go ahead and just break it loose. Just like that. Okay. So now you can tell I'm able to just screw these off. Screw these off. And back them way, way off. Um, I didn't really actually have to do um, these ones because they're closed. Um, but just for argument's sake, I do all the valves so that I know that I have to check all the valves. Um, when in all actuality, like here, this valve is closed. These two valves were closed. I could have left them alone and I could have just came over to the intake valve um, of cylinder number three and back this all the way off to where it was closed as well. But like I said, um, I'm kind of weird that way. I know it creates a little bit of extra work, but um, I really like to make sure that I have all of them backed off. Let me get in here. So, so this one has got pressure on it, so it usually takes a little while to get these off. Um, it, I would usually use a 5 8 ratchet and back this off for speed. That's all right. I am talking and narrating anyways. So... <laughs> um, Again, just gonna go through, I'm gonna do all eight of these on here. I'm gonna leave them attached, right? Okay. And then I'm gonna go over and I still have the other side. So um, once I get that done, I will, uh, I'll come back to you guys. Okay, so now I've done both sides. All of these are nice and loose. Okay, and I went ahead and reinstalled my spark plugs down here, um, and I shoved the wires on uh, just to keep them from hanging because I'm keeping the distributor in um, for right now. I, I am a firm believer um, that if you're keeping stuff in, you should it should either be all the way in or it should be all the way out. So um, that means I did tighten those spark plugs. I know I'm going to end up taking them out, <laughs> but um, I did tighten those spark plugs. Uh, again, the game, name of the game is to seal your motor up. I, I went, I've already put on the spark plugs for this side. Um, there is another option. They have these cool little plugs here. Um, I actually got these when I bought, I bought a uh, 602 crate motor for a sprint car. Um, and it came plugged with this so you can actually take these and um, shove them inside the spark plug hole and that seals it up too but uh, i don't know i've always just used my spark plugs most of the time uh, I, I resort to those plugs um, if i don't have something to to screw in So again, I'm gonna tighten up all of my spark plugs and then I'm gonna put the valve covers back on. Um, and I will actually tighten down the valve covers. Again, name of the game is tightening everything up. So next piece, which is actually um, gonna be the last piece here, um, only because I'm leaving the motor or the engine inside the car. 
Um, usually I'd end up taking off the headers and, and disconnecting everything just to get it um, to where I can pull this out. And then the exhaust ports of my heads would be left open. Um, they make really cool covers that you can put on there to keep anything from getting in there. Uh, but if you're kind of, you know, a, a baller on a budget, um, you, you can just put duct tape. I mean, duct tape really good across the holes that are left there. Um, keep anything from getting down inside. It's just a little extra protection. I know we closed the valves, but there's still that little bit of, little bit of runner and you don't want anything building up. Um, any dust, dirt, or anything building up on top of the valve when you get ready to go open it. So um, make sure you cover this up really, really well. Um, usually, I might still do that. I probably will still do that. I'll probably pull the header off and, and put some type of cover on here just to be safe. Uh, but for years, um, I, I, I didn't do that. I, I just kind of left it the way it sat because... If anything is going to get up in there, it's got to go through this exhaust and blow up in there or crawl up in there. Um, and that usually doesn't happen. So if you're in a really dusty, dirty area and a lot like sandstorms and things like that, um, which, you know, out at my dad's house is like that, I would definitely make sure that this thing is sealed up nice and tight. In fact, I'd probably put, you know, duct tape and and seal it up and then put the header on <laughs> to, to just give it as much protection as I possibly could. Uh, name of the game is to protect your engine. Protect, 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 protect. You usually got a lot of money wrapped up in these things. Um, it's really stupid to let something happen to it because of something simple and something stupid like that. Um, so the next step here is actually going to be closing this up and then um, we'll talk about the uh, coolant system. All right, so at this point, you have already done your, um, your fuel system. You, you put antifreeze in the car and ran it before we ever started any of this. So there's already antifreeze inside your coolant system. Um, you've, you've capped off your fuel lines. You've emptied out your cylinders. Um, you've backed off your valves and you're almost ready to rock. So this is full currently. Um, you're gonna wanna drain your coolant system. Um, I am not going to actually drain my coolant system right now, but I'll talk you through how to do it real quick. Um, you're basically just gonna di disconnect your upper and lower hose. Uh, I like to disconnect them at the water pump um, and at the thermostat housing. And then you let it drain, not out onto the ground because it's antifreeze. Make sure you catch that stuff. Um, it's environmentally friendly to do so. So, um, but then right after you do that, you're gonna come down here to the bottom of your block, okay? You see this little plug? This is a drain plug. Mine happens to be an Allen head. Um, so I would get an Allen and I would unscrew that and then you're going to get a bunch of water that comes out of there. Um, make sure you catch that too. That's got antifreeze. Uh, there's a plug on both sides. So you're going to unplug that, let it drain as much as possible. Unplug the other side, let it drain as much as possible. And then I put, I put the plugs back in. Um, and at that point, you're good to go. Um, if you like, again, depending on where you're storing it, if you feel the need to, you can try to cap off your thermostat, duct tape, whatever, cap off your water pump, whatever. Um, I, if, I'm, if it's staying in a garage, I don't usually worry about it. Um, but that's how you're going to do your coolant system. And we'll go ahead and move on. You have done your coolant system, uh, put coolant in, uh, drained the coolant out, drained your block, you've backed off your valves, you've done your whole entire fuel system. 
um, removing the lines, marbling the lines, um, getting the methanol out of your carburetor, putting marbles in your carburetor, covering your carburetor up, and um, it, it, you've, you've drained your block, you've capped off all of your lines, um, you've done all that happy stuff by now. You're pretty much done. At this point, I'm going to actually uh, button my car back up. I'm gonna put the hood and stuff on it, um, air my tires up, and then this thing is gonna get pushed outside and I'm gonna put it inside my enclosed trailer. Um, anytime you can cover your car, best way to do it. Uh, uh, tarps, that works all right. Um, putting it back inside the trailer is good. Leaving it in the garage is always the best because you can work on it. Um, but if you're gonna push it out somewhere and store it, cover things up, you know. Uh, if it's outside, take your seat out uh, or at least the seat cover out so it doesn't get trashed. Take your belts out so they don't get sun faded um, and, and do that stuff. Make sure that the rest of the equipment that's in your car is going to be able to withstand being stored wherever you're storing it. Mine's going inside an enclosed trailer again, like I said, so I'm going to end up leaving my uh, seat pad and all that stuff in because it's not, really not going to be exposed to any sunlight or weather or anything like that. Normally what I would do instead of that, instead of putting it in a trailer, um, this is when I jack the car up. I, I get, get all four tires off the ground and I start taking tires and wheels off. I set them off to the side because um, I start, I usually start my maintenance right away. Um, I start, you know, packing wheel bearings, which we'll go over in another video. Um, I, I, I start servicing heim joints and rods and uh, doing my inspection for cracks on the frame. And I do all that stuff. All that stuff that it takes to start getting ready for race season, I usually start um, right away so I can do just a little bit at a time and be ready to race by the time it's time to race. But I have a bunch of other projects that I want to bring into the garage and work on. So like I said, we're going to move it out. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of space. Uh, that's the dream one day to have a big enough shop that I can put, you know, five, six projects next to each other um, and work on all of them because who doesn't want that, right? I want a ginormous, ginormous shop. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, basically good to go. Going to button it up, put it in the trailer. There's one little piece, little piece uh, that I want to throw out there. With everything that you've done to this, you should put a note on it, okay? Even if you pull the motor out and wrap it up and, and store it somewhere, you should always put a note on, on your motors so you know how you left them last. I mean, what... What happens if something comes up and I don't get to this thing until July or August of next year? Am I going to remember what I did? Right now it's November, right? So am I going to remember what I did? Probably because I'm a little obsessed with my race car. But um, there's a chance that it won't happen. Um, or or maybe you're going to get somebody that, or maybe you're going to get somebody that wants to come help you, um, you know, and and they don't know what the state of the motor is. So, write a note. Uh, I'm gonna write a note, I'll give you an example, um, and put it on the car. Uh, I'm gonna put mine right on top of the, the uh, carburetor cover and, and kind of tape it to it so it stays with it. If I took the carburetor off, I would, I would cover the, the, the hole there where the carb goes on top of the intake, probably with duct tape, because that's what I do. Um, and then I'd write the note, and then I would tape the uh, the note right to the top of that so that it cannot be seen. Things like, did you drain the oil out of it? Do not start, no oil. Or we back the valves off and we're sitting at top dead center. So I would put, do not start, do not turn over. Valves backed off sitting at top dead center. 
I changed the oil before I went to Las Vegas or before I wanted to go to Las Vegas and didn't get to go race. Um, so it's got brand new oil, brand new oil filter on it. I decided not to drain the oil. So I would put a note on there, good oil, new oil, fresh oil, does not need to be changed, um, things like that. The more information you can give yourself on your notes, the better, uh, especially if you're a guy that, that builds a motor and puts it on the shelf as a spare. Put all the information you can on it, right? So that way you know where you left off. Um, I'll give you a picture or uh, show you kind of what my note looks like when I'm all done. I'm gonna push this bad boy out uh, and get ready to start the next piece. Real fast, just an example of my note and putting it on top of the motor. It's the home version of lockout tag out, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Thank you guys, I really appreciate you watching my video. Um, I know I'm still kind of new at this. Uh, I, I'm trying to get the videos a little bit more uh, to the point, more manageable for, for what you guys want to see. Uh, let me know if you have any styles, anything like that that you would prefer. Um, or if the long video that I did before this part one um, was more of the style. You want to see every little step, uh, how it's all done versus just this, you know, do this, do this, do that. This is what I did sort of thing. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, that really helps this, this channel out. It helps me out. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, more videos to come, lots more videos to come. They're not all going to be how-tos and, and, and things like that. We're going to get into some really fun stuff later on um, that's it's going to involve you know actual racing. We might, we might get into, who knows, building a figure eight car, um, things like that. So stay tuned for the channel. Hang in there with me. If you got suggestions or if you think I did something wrong or you got a better way of doing something or uh, you do something a little bit different, comment, uh, put it down below. I'm here to learn too. Uh, hopefully all of this stuff helps you out and we will see you in the next video, guys. Thanks.